Hello fellow modelers, this is Justin with J Heart Model Works. Welcome back to the channel. Just wanted to do a bench update to kind of show where we're at as we made some more progress on the XJ220. Um, so here we are. Uh, trying to get some better lighting in this time so you can get a better look at that color. So this is where we are. The body is completely finished at this point. Um, we have all of our windows in, all of our glass came in really well. We've got our tent in for the, uh, for the window. I just used some Tamiya smoke on there. It's not my favorite, but um, it works. It gives a really kind of an odd texture, but it it's not horrible. So additionally on the interior we've got our uh, dome lights painted in and our rear view mirror. That rear view mirror was painted with a bit of Molotow chrome on a brush. Um, it's not something that I would put through an airbrush at any point but it does have its uses for things like mirrors, things you're never going to touch. Um, because if you touch it, it just goes really dull really quick. Let's see, what else do we have? Our windshield wipers are in. They went in pretty clean. I didn't have too much trouble with those at all. Uh, we got our mirrors in. The mirrors went in perfectly using the, uh, the tip that I showed you guys with the wire studs. <clears throat> no glue mass, no nothing. You see that the uh, all the glue is on the inside here, so that's a real clean way of doing those. You know, on this back glass, um, concern I do have is this does not. If you do this, you're going to want to do a lot of test fitting, and sanding, and test fitting, and sanding before you paint. Um, this edge doesn't sit well initially and so it just catches and what you've got to do is sand this back a bit to get a little bit more room and then you can wiggle with this and get this otherwise it just catches and it stops about right there so you've got to kind of get it to go past and where it really hangs is right there on that top center area so um, I did some sanding and brought the whole thing back and then sanded this top edge a bit and then sand the bottom, just very carefully sand the bottom edge so that you can get kind of a, a slight curve on both ends that helps it to, to negotiate where that's at. Uh, another issue I did have is I, these are molded hinges and I broke one of them off so what I ended up doing here is using a bit of jewelry wire and bending this into this L and then bending the hoop and then gluing it into the uh, the windshield so that worked out for me without getting too much glue everywhere um, so my hinge operates again we have our gas filler cap in, and that's all painted up. Got a little bolts on there. And then we've got the rear grill, and the rear grill looked really, really nice, and it was perfect. And then I dropped the kit, and you can kind of see in there where the slats broke on this side. Um, several, like three of them broke. And I've got them kind of lined up as best as I can, but it's one of those things where once you break it, it just isn't the same again. But it's not too bad. We can live with it. Uh, finally, we do have the front turn indicators in. There's just some, uh, to me, a clear orange over the indicator side. And then with that Molotow Chrome brushed in behind there, and then the glass laid on top of it, it really gives you a good shiny finish. Um, a very realistic turn signal indicator appearance to it. So that's where we're at with the body itself. Let's go ahead and set that up here. 
I next went on and started to tinker with the uh, chassis panel. So let's just see this up here. We uh, it's body color, so we did have to do some body. I did not want to spray this with 2K, so I ended up actually using the Tamiya LP9 Lacquer Clear, um, and I think it came out quite well. This it's. I honestly can't see much, if any, difference between that lip and that hood. So, the LP9 is some really nice stuff. Uh, I haven't, didn't have to sand it. I didn't, this is literally just out of the gun on here, or out of the airbrush. Uh, the other thing I did was I did flock this part. This is like a locating area for the interior tub. Uh, but... When you mount the interior in place, this is per clearly visible. This also, looking at the real car, is the dividing line between the leather and the carpeted area. So, this will be, of course, this interior beige color from Zero Paints. And that'll line up against that. Then this, uh, I'll do the floors in here in this it's kind of an anthracite gray uh, or a charcoal gray flocking from model car garage is what I use um, let me know if you want I can do a um, tutorial video on how I do flocking maybe I'll do that when I do the interior section or I'll, while I'm doing the interior I'll film that for you guys uh, so we do have our the chassis tub is done and then when we flip this over doing some research I did find that this is kind of a flatter semi-gloss black panel um, but the the gunmetal glossy gunmetal gray does go farther up than Tamiya's instructions Tamiya would have you paint this part and then cut it off right along this top edge and then do a straight line across here but um looking at several video uh, pictures from rm soothby auctions and places like that i was able to find that this does go further back than what tamio wants you to do it so i went ahead and did it all the way back to here um let's see what else oh those got our rivet or bolt details in here and i did these using a tip that I picked up from Dave Thibodeau at DT Model Art and what he's using is a pencil, a mechanical pencil. So what you do is you put uh, some silver paint down, you can see I was doing it over here earlier, um, put some paint on, there, on here, you're going to take your pencil, dip it in your paint, tap off the XX so you only have like a little bit of paint on your pencil. And then you're just going to come straight down and tap one of those rivets and put your paint down. And then you just do, you can do one or two rivets and then just pick up some more paint, dab some stuff off, and then do a couple of more rivets and just slowly but surely pick these out and they come out really well. Uh, I did have to do some putty work. There's a, uh, along where these interior points are there's two huge sink marks in the chassis and so I did use some Tamiya putty and let that dry and then sanded that smooth I also did it here because there's another set of sinks that go right along here in kind of like a square so I did the side ones but I couldn't really do as you can see in there uh, I couldn't really do that top row because that's right where the the bolt detail was and I didn't want to lose that bolt detail um, but I was able to get these to come out really nice so that cleaned up pretty well uh, what else do we have the other thing that I did this week was I went ahead and I did the taillight bracket with the, uh, the taillights in here and these were a pain in the butt, to be honest with you, because the frame, the black frames had to be painted, which means I had to mask off the lens areas 
so that I could paint those. And I did that using this um, micro mask. I haven't used any of the other ones. This is honestly the first time I've used this one. And the stuff is like really thick and gooey. But I've just used a brush. Use an old brush. Don't use your good brushes. Don't use like a Winsor & Newton Series 7 $15 brush for this stuff. Because this stuff is, is awful. Um, I just used some old brush an old brush the same brush that i use for uh decaling and it it did what i needed it to do i kind of wish i had a little more control over the stuff the stuff is real thick um so i did end up having to even after i masked it and sprayed it when it came back i ended up having to repaint a couple of these with my hand with the brush but all in all it wasn't horrible and then after that i just removed one side sprayed some tamiya clear red then mask that side off, mask the uh, backup light, and then did the turn signals with some Tamiya clear orange, and then just it came out really well. So that's where we are today. Uh, I think I'm going to do these. I, th I was thinking about doing these weekly, but I think I'm going to do these when I have a major assembly finished so i'll probably do one when i do when i have the uh the engine assembled um maybe the engine and chassis we'll see where we go with that and i'll do another one for the interior and then maybe wrap that up with a final assembly and kind of show you where everything's at so that's where we're at let me know what you think about the schedule um at the bottom, let me know if you'd like to see me do a flocking tutorial. I know there are several out there, but maybe I'll show you how I do mine. Um, how I try to reduce some of the mess. And like I said, if you like what you see, hit that like button. Hit the subscribe. Share the video. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you're notified when I send, another, uh, send out another one of these. And thank you for visiting J Hart Model Works, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.